welcome to another episode of Two Fat Guys Talking Flowers, where we're always going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly of our flowers. I'm Fern here with Joel on the ones and two. Ryan, Mimi in the house. Mike has officially left us, and he is now in Jet Fresh North Country. Cabin Mike. Cabin, Cabin Mike. Mike is in effect. And our badass jack of he all actually, trades. He sent Jeez. me a FedEx label today. And it said Jeff Fresh North Country. It's That's Jeff so Fresh the North Country. That's, right. That's where it should be. Sorry to interrupt you. Don't interrupt this flow. No, you're not. And an awesome kick ass jack of all trades. She's not just the owner's daughter. Guest today is none other than Tracy Park, House of Flora. So much. She's a super oh my gosh, fatty to hear you lover. say my name. You first. forgot number one fatty fan. Number one fatty fan. I don't know. I don't want to get anybody no, upset. No, she's she's probably she's, like if we're doing it annually, she would hold the title for this year for sure. Damn. Yes. Tracy just challenged Damn. a lot of you. I mean No, 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 no. <laughs> Nicole forever and always will be the president. I'm not, yeah, and exactly. Always. We're not saying and president fan club. We're just saying the number no, one. No, no, I'm just like Number one fan. Yeah. Yep. Number one fan, cheerleader. Yep. I will be here to lift you up always. Yep. I am the cheerleader for sure. I'm a and two fat guys junkie for and sure. And it's proof because I got a phone call a couple weeks ago that said, hey, you guys put out an episode a year ago saying that you were challenging people to go to Memorial Day Flowers and I'm accepting the challenge. And I said, oh my gosh, I almost forgot about that. Yes, we did challenge the fatties to go and join us in Memorial Day Flowers. And Man, you know, I was just thinking about that in the car. I was like, I know we put a challenge out. We put out several challenges, but Tracy really, really knocked it out of the park. She basically drove eight hours to join us for Man, Memorial Day. Man, you drove Flowers. all the way out there? Love that. I did. I did. Now, my dad said I could leave the shop on Friday at two o'clock. I didn't leave until four. And so I got caught up in a little bit of that um, New York City traffic getting onto the GWB. Um, and then, you know, the New Jersey Turnpike forever. And then finally, you know, heading down to, what is it, Maryland, mm -hmm. Delaware, Delaware, Maryland. But yeah, it took me eight hours, but totally worth it. I listened to that Memorial Day podcast another time um, just to go, OK, you know, why what hit you so hard um, to remember what hit me so hard when I heard it? And it was the stories that Mimi, you told and then the story about um Oh, Ramiro, um, going to his, I think, grandfather's grave and finding a flower. Like there was one flower on his grandfather's grave and like his family is gone now from there. And somebody just went and put a flower on his grave and it just like, it hit me and I'm like, yep, this is what you do. You do, you go and you remember and you respect. And it just, it hit me in the heart. And I looked at the calendar the week after mother's day and I was like, Oh, Memorial day. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta call you guys. Like I have to go. I have to be there. And um, she was there bright and early, ready, already waiting for me downstairs. And I was <laughs> running around with my crazy kids and uh, husband who was excited to help. But at the same time, you know, flying is now not the same. You can't get anywhere on time. So I was delayed. So we were supposed to be able to go Friday. But all of the museums were closed by the time we got there. We jumped too far ahead. We need to take a step back. First of all, where is House of Flora for those who don't know? Uh, House of Flora is in Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut. There you go. That's why she's outside in the sun wearing, mm -hmm. wearing her, nice, her, in wearing her nice florist hat. Her official I merch. love this thing. The knife. Oh, the I'm knife wearing on the, the same hat. hat. Everything. Same hats. You see, great minds. So cool. Think alike. Think alike. We got the same hat on. <laughs> so we just, we just ended our pre-order for the, the June, but we got a lot of the, the florist is the number one uh, design, but in black. A lot of people wanted to see it in black. I think it's because it has a knife and we are likely to get cut. <laughs> mm. Don't fuck with a flower. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a clipper girl. I'm a knife girl. My father oh. taught me how to use a knife when I was a young little thing. And so, you know, it's always a knife. Clippers are for like, you know, thick stems, like um uh anything woody I use clippers for, but everything else it's a knife. There you go. So that's like that's totally us. You yeah. nailed it. Whoever designed oh. who this else nailed it. Who else awesome. would have designed that? AI. No, Ryan. You, Ryan. <laughs> I bought the store out, guys. Yeah, for I, I had to get it in Jet Fresh Green because you know, that's the, Fatty that's Friday. The fatty I, I wear my gear on Fridays. <laughs> it's the I, best day of the week, you guys. Seriously, I still don't feel um, comfortable calling people shop. fatties. 
It feels offensive still to me, but I, I feel like it's a term offensive. of endearment. Like it's not of- offensive because you're fatties, you're cute, you're yeah. you're fat. Like you're P H A T. It's not like you're. It's not like <laughs> you're so- going. All sounds bad to me. It's not like you're going. Hey, fat <laughs> ass. You know, it's okay. It's fatties. <laughs> Yeah, I, guess. I don't mind it. I like it. I have um, one of the old school hats that um, it says fatty fan club or official mm-hmm. fatty, official fatty. There you go. And um, somebody did say to me like, what? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's the two fat guys fan club. Like, it's all good. It's, it's, it's an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> yes, it's an inside thing. When you know, you know. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I love that. I think the one with the knife is my favorite too. It's, it's definitely cool. the one I, I gravitate to. Yeah. I bought them all. But I gravitate to this one more. Yeah, it's gangsta. I got one for my dad. He really liked the the white hat with the rose mm-hmm. and the jet. Yeah. So I ordered one of those for my dad, and then uh, GD, one of our designers, he really liked the the green knife as well, the florist green knife. Nice. So they'll Avail- be coming soon. Available now, guys. Yeah. Go Where's get the them. plug? Where's the plug? <laughs> Merch store. Fresh Merch shop. store on the website. all the cool kids are gonna have them. Link in bio, Fresh Shop website. You'll find it. <laughs> So you guys did jump ahead a lot. So sorry, but we're gonna backtrack. Chasey, Tracy, you're a second generation, or are you a third generation florist? I'm a fourth generation. Fourth Ooh. generation, hell yeah, same yep. here. Yep. My great grandparents owned greenhouses in Cromwell, Connecticut. Um, they came over from Sicily, and their families owned flour mills in Sicily. And when they came over, um, what was the name of the grower in in in, in Cromwell? Um, there, there was Brant Fort Greenhouse, but there is a grower, uh, Pearson's. Pearson. They were, yep. Yeah, they were the people that grew the roses. Ah. Uh, yeah. Was there a, had, um, pinch, a pinch back or something like that? A pinch back? Uh, I don't know that name, but my dad would. My dad would. So um, your so family traces my family came back over. to Italy. What year did, when did they come over? Uh, early 1900s. Wow. And so my great grandparents, they grew um, geraniums, they grew mums, I think they grew carnations, and they had like nine kids and all of them worked in the greenhouses, my grandfather being one of them. (laughs) And my grandfather went off to World War II. And when he came back, did a own your own flower shop class or floral design class. And um, I think it was like a week long. And and then they went back to Britain and started their business and had their family and that's where my father was brought up um, in the flower shop. And this is why, Mike, I want you to be on with my dad sometime because he hears you talking and he's like, oh, yeah, 28th Street. He used to go there when he was like three years old, four years old. Um, and that's where my grandfather would get his flowers. And last last week or the week before, you guys had the Armelini family on. He was like, you know, so many connections um, with that. And it was, I don't know, listen, listening to him tell me the stories. I'm like, no way. Um, but then my dad um, started his flower shop in 1974. He and my grandfather didn't really see the future the same way. So my dad um, started his shop in 1974, and this year is our 50th year. And I was brought up in the flower shop, um, sleeping in pure at night. Um, my dad would have a TV in there for my brother, whatever show on TV, and playing in the basement. Um, playing with uh, Oasis foam, you know, putting our fingers in, Um, (laughs) uh, doing water tubes. Um, My dad had a a racetrack set up downstairs in the basement. Um, So my brother and I play um, with cars. And then he also had a train set set up and up in the flower shop. It was our playground. The backyard was my playground. When we had big snowstorms, my brother and I would um, make snow forts and then grab those Pearson boxes because they they were waxed on the bottom yeah. and like go sledding down the big hills it's oh. awesome <laughs> so that was my childhood and uh yeah so definitely a little flower child i my dad told me that when i was I mean, really young he pulled me out of school for valentine's day my brother and i and we were wrapping roses and i was wrapping them inside out <laughs> And people just thought it was like the cutest thing that I was getting tips. And I was like, I'm sorry, it doesn't look the way it's supposed to look. And, you know, my business. And <laughs> I love it too. Just to, you know, I don't remember it, but my dad tells me the stories. How long have you been working in the flower shop? I mean, three years old? Pretty much. You grew up, you know? Pretty much. No side gigs. No, my parents uh, have. 
We never stepped away. You never said, man, I want to do something else. It was just in you. The flowers were there. Flowers were there. They were always there. Um, when I was, I think, in sixth grade, um, I saw the movie Annie and I fell in love. And um, I was over at my grandparents' house, sitting in my grandpa's lap. He had just gotten home from the shop and there was the New Britain Herald. And in the New Britain Herald, there was a little advertisement that said um, auditions for Annie. And I was like, what? I was, I knew all the songs. And I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally doing this. And went home, begged my parents to like take me to the audition. At that time, I was a slob and, you know, there were clothes everywhere. And I'm like, if I clean my room, will you take me to the audition? And they said yes. So I went to the audition, I sang, and then the woman who was the director, um, she, she said, say shut up. And I was like, shut up. And she was like, all right, you're going to be my pepper. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. So that was the beginning of the theater bug. And from then on, I was like, music theater, full stream ahead. I, I loved it. Like every Broadway show, I every old totally school movie that, that came yeah. on. You definitely have yeah. musical Broadway Yeah, but she's energy. downplaying it. She was like on a national tour. She's a celeb. I was. She's Were a Broadway really? celeb. <laughs> Can you sing a little bit for us? Why are you always making everybody perform? I love it. Come on. Nobody, uh, nobody that sings see, likes to this, be put on the spot to oh, sing. Oh, you had Tyler on. on. He did so good. So what um, was she? What was your a big? Bit, a, little, a little Annie? Give us a little Annie. <laughs> the sun will come out. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. (laughs) Just thinking about (laughs) tomorrow. With that, with that hat, you should always be like singing. It's a hard knock life for us. For us, no joke, (laughs) no joke. (laughs) Um, When I got a little older and I moved to New York, I um, there was an audition for Annie for the national tour, and I was working at oh, what was the name of it? It's still there. It's on 47th between Broadway and 8th. Um, the Rum House. I was working at the Rum House. And um, the people who were doing the tour came in and they were like, Tracy, you need to audition. And I was like, seriously, I'm a little old. And they're like, no, come and audition. I'm short. And um, I went in, auditioned, and it was for Martin Sharnan. Martin Sharnan was the man who wrote Annie back in the day. Oh, wow. In 1978, it, was, it won, I think, seven Tony Awards. And he was there and one of the monitors came out and he was like, all right, Tracy, when you go in, look at Martin and put, you know, sing directly to him. Don't sing over his head. Because, you know, sometimes when you go to auditions, you like pick a point on the wall and that's what you sing to. He was like, don't sing to anywhere except for Martin. And I was like, all right. So I went in and introduced myself, told him what I was going to sing. And I put my hands on my hips and sang my 16 bars of honey bun from South Pacific and I finished and he was like, where have you been? And I'm like, <laughs> Martin Sharnan. Like that was, oh, fuck yeah. that was huge. I actually had a dream about him uh, the other <laughs> night. Um, I was doing Annie again and I was like, what? I'm like, uh, you know, those, those nightmare dreams kind of. And I was like, where do I go? What do I do? And he's like, you know what to do. And he was like, you still want to do flowers? And I'm like, yeah, but if you're going to hire me, then, you know, I'll go back to theater. <laughs> he was awesome. like, I'll always hire How me. old were you when this happened? Meanwhile, uh, 20, 21. I think I just turned 21. I went to the Heart School of Music for a year, and it wasn't for me. Wow. And, and there were amazing people there, um, musicians and singers. And it just wasn't the place for music theater then. So um, I went right to New York. But I was, yeah, 21. Oh. Wait, just a baby. Wait, I think we hear um, we have somebody wants to say. I think somebody wants to sing some praises too. Hold on, let me see. Hey, look who's here! <laughs> Jonah! Hey, Tracy. Hi, beautiful lady. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Jenna, rock star. Surprise! <laughs> Yay! This is the best surprise. We had such the bonding experience doing this. Like, I feel like you and Mimi are like sisters from another Mister forever. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our hearts just like met, and we just you know bonded over this experience. It was incredible. Yeah. Agreed. So, so listeners, this Jenna, Jenna of Rosa Prima. So yeah, for the listeners, we just let in Jenna from Rosa Prima who's currently right now on her lunch break because she is in the florology uh, classes. 
But when I told her that we were going to oh, be man. having Tracy on, she said she wanted to just stop in to surprise her and also sing her praises. So welcome. Oh, absolutely. Tracy, you're amazing. It was such an honor to to you know work with you and Mimi um over the Memorial Day weekend. It was it was an emotional weekend for sure. And and having a little bit of fun with you gals was just mm -hmm. unreal. It's I'm so glad we met in person. Um yeah, and as you know, I love Mimi to death. She's like she's a rock star, really uh, a super woman with the biggest heart. So to meet another woman like that was <laughs> Just amazing. Amazing. For sure. For sure. And Tracy became yeah. an honorary Tia. Tia Aww. Tracy, right? That's With Vic amazing. Victoria uh Victoria was there and my kids were there and my kids were in love with Tracy. They were like, She's so nice. How can somebody be so nice? <laughs> I know. Thank you. No, Victoria keeps asking for a Tracy as well. So it's uh <laughs> all the kids love her, not just adults, the yes. kids too. I'm totally coming to babysit. Definitely. <laughs> Perfect. I'll take all three of them. You're in, girl. You're in. I'll well, even pay I'm you. Down. Well, now that we're I in, uh, now that we have uh, the Victoria Victoria's mom here, she's going to tell us a quick, I, everybody has to hear this story about the night that we were at the volunteers dinner with um, Miss Victoria had my phone and she went on Spotify and would go up to people and say, isn't this your favorite song? The two fat guys song. <laughs> <laughs> It was the cutest thing ever. We had the to cutest. FaceTime Mike She's definitely to definitely a Jet Fresh star. Yes, for sure. Love it. So you Next guys, Jenner, you guys sure. really got, I mean, mm -hmm. talk about a bonding, you know, with your families, but just being out there Memorial Day weekend, um, you know, Memorial Day flowers that we all know. I mean, we assume we, everybody we, listening knows, right? We assume. I mean, yeah, it's an emotional experience. They go to Arlington National Cemetery and then it's like. Maybe three. not. Maybe the, not. Okay. Do you want to explain it? Maybe not. Yeah, Mike, you should really explain it. Give us me. The, yes. Yeah. Or Fern, you've been there. I have been. There. Go ahead. Tell me. Well, what, real, real quick. Recap yeah. it. Go ahead. So Memorial Day flowers. It's on Memorial Day weekend. Um, you're at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington D.C. Um, if not you, only that cemetery. Yeah. No, there's well, several cemeteries. All over, it's several all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's several across, but the main uh, the main point are, right. is at Arlington. You know, but yes, it's happening across the country. Um, if you've never been to Washington D.C. on a major American holiday weekend, it is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. It is crazy. Um, for Memorial Day weekend, you have tons of family visiting, groups visiting. Um, you have motorcycle groups visiting. I've yes. never seen so many motorcycles in one place. Rolling um, Thunder. Mm -hmm. The Rolling Thunder, they call it. There is... Um, there's so many events going on for fallen soldiers or, you know, you know people who were injured and all, all kinds of veterans and, you know, people who who unfortunately gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. It's an emotional, it's an emotional thing. Um, you're holding flowers that we all know are super powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Flowers, you know, have a huge touch on the heart. Um, you're putting roses on graves. You're putting, you're handing flowers to people for them to put flowers on the graves of their lost ones. Um, if you really take the time and, and walk through and put the flowers, mm -hmm. you're whispering the person's name. You're thanking them for giving the ultimate sacrifice yeah. for our country. Mm -hmm. our if, if you're patriotic at, at all, or, you know, or if, if I, I believe everybody with a heart will feel the Ooh, same me? way. It's amazing. <laughs> It's you? Amazing. You asking Jenna? No. <laughs> no, we know Jenna. Jen, Jenna, Jenna for sure is patriotic. But since 2011, Very. after after um, after 2011, a group of individuals led by Ramiro um, started Memorial Day Flowers. And with Memorial Day Flowers, what has happened for the since then, um, the flower industry has come together to um, donate flowers that are placed in different cemeteries throughout the, the nation. Also, there are some florists who host their own cemeteries. Um, we met one that weekend, um, and he's been successfully doing it for years. Um, and really because Memorial Day was originally called Decorations Day, and it's it's like Fern said, it's, it's a way to give back. But um, Tracy was with me, and Jenna was a little late, like we spoke about traveling nowadays and flying is kind of like a pain in the butt. You never get anywhere on time. But um, the second that they opened, Armelini donates their trucks to take up the flowers. 
And then um, the second that they open, I'm going to try not to cry, that truck and you see so many boxes from all of our industry, like, you know, competitors and small farms, big farms. Um, it's so impressive that that we can do that. And it just goes to show that our industry is so powerful. I mean, just only in Arlington to see that Armelini truck, it was imp impressive. My son was dying to get on it. Steve and Armelini let him on. I sent a picture to Mike and Mike's like, wrong boxes. He can use the Jeff Fresh boxes next time. <laughs> but, um, you know, and we had families from um, different groups throughout Washington. And we also had like the Armelinis there. Jenna was there with her family, Tracy. We had Eden. Rafi's daughter from Pedal Production came and volunteered. It was fun to 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 meet her. Uh, there was we also had another Diana who was there. Her her and her brother just started donating. She lives in DC, right? Yes, Rafi's daughter. Yes, she does. But she I would never met her before. She, uh, Rafi's like, oh, you're headed up. Let me give you my daughter's number, and we connected, and she came and she was a yeah. she was another rock star who couldn't stop working and. After we worked, we went 100%. and we started going and visiting some um, different friends and, and people who had reached out to us to let us place flowers on their um, loved one's um, graves. And it was it was just like we were sweating our booties off because it was a hot day. <laughs> but we were headed to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and we we're completely, completely moved by seeing Stephen Armellini place that reef up there. That was really, really a beautiful thing. And he was moved as well, right? Jenna and and, yeah. and Tracy and I an, sat there. What an honor that he is. He was he he couldn't contain that 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 honor. That is an honor. Once they started wow. playing taps, it was over. You know, yeah. I didn't know they were gonna play taps. So once they started playing taps, yeah, you you could see him get emotional, and then all of us were just like, mm -hmm. it, it was, yeah. That song is no so way. powerful and emotional at the same time. Did yeah. the president come while you guys were there? No, he was there. He came on Monday. Monday, yeah. He was there on Monday. But, but Obama went to Alexandria. Uh huh. Which, the Alexandria Cemetery. Yeah. So he and he was with one of the people from Memorial Day Flowers and used Memorial Day Flowers for to place out. So Obama went to Alexandria because it is the first desegregated cemetery in the United States. So actually, they had to they had to remove some or um, they. Re Tracy, help me here. I'm still still trying not to cry. They um, they. they yeah, they exhumed, um, I think it was like 100 bodies and brought them over to Arlington. Um, the Yeah, the gentleman that was there at the dinner, um, the historian, he was explaining it all to us. And it was like, whoa, um, because of, you know, desegregation. It was it was a lot to take in. Yeah. But, um, and then that, that yeah. gentleman received Obama's challenge coin, which is uh, was pretty cool because we also received some challenge coins from the Memorial Day Foundation. So it was really cool. It's so cool. When they made that presentation, I was like, whoa, my boyfriend is um, a retired army colonel and he's got a like entire side of um, one of our um, armoires um, filled with challenge coins. And when they presented the people from Memorial Day Flowers with the challenge coins, they were sitting with us. And I was like, I need to look at that. And it is so cool. Little did I know all of us were going to get them. Mm -hmm. And on the front, it says um, Memorial Day Flowers, Arlington National Cemetery. Um, and then on the back, um, it's the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And uh, it says Flowers of Remembrance Day. So we all, at the people that were at the dinner, got one of these. Mm -hmm. And I've been carrying it with me every day since. It's a huge deal. But to see the president's challenge coin, that was that really was cool. Insane. Really cool. Jenna, was this your first year there? It was. It was. Actually, last year when Stephen Armellini was calling for donations, I happened to pick up the phone. And when he filled me in, I was like, what? How come I haven't heard about this? Like, I want to be part of this. And it was obviously too late for me to do it last year. But I made sure that I was doing it this year and it's going to be a family tradition um as long as they do it i mean i'm in i'm all in wow that's great it was super good for the soul so good for the soul i mean talking to the families of these young men that you know died in iraq not that long ago and just sitting down with them and just you know spending a few minutes just to hear their stories it, it just takes it to a whole different level 
of appreciation of what they really have sacrificed in order for us to have our freedom and have our lives here in this beautiful country. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be coming back. And you guys, as much as I would love to stay for the whole thing, I have my competition, um, go, go, design competition Jenna, today for testing. Go butt out there. Go, so go, I'm gonna go, Jenna. Let's go win. Go get I'm it, gonna, girl. Gonna swallow go some him. food and, and keep Jenna, some Jenna, we're very so proud of you. Thank you, guys. Good it means luck, so much. It him. means so much. Thank it's been quite a journey since on. October, so I'll keep you all posted. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, okay, let us know. so inspiring. Good stuff. It was so great to see all of you, though. Tracy, I love you a long time. I'll I'll uh, give Vikush a hug for you. And Mimi, you're the bomb. And the rest of the Jet Fresh team, you love know how you. I feel about you guys. We... You're my heart and my soul. <laughs> love you. Thank you. Love, love you guys. Yeah. Talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. Yeah, it was it was it was emotional. Um, but honestly, when my kids were talking to me, they they went off with Oliver on the side and were giving putting out some flowers by themselves. They came back and told me that they went and laid. They were just reading the different um, you know medals and the different uh, ranks in the military, but that they ran into a a, a tombstone that said it was a POW prisoner of war um, captured, released. <laughs> And then captured again and killed. So my kids were like really moved by these kind of stories. And you could see that. Or, you know, um, they saw the bomber of the Joe Lewis, the famous. Uh, they were just walking and saw that. And they were like, hey, look at that one. So they were they were really moved. Um, it's funny because um, they internally were having a conversation on the plane. And I just didn't I, I was blown away because they said, um, Dylan's like, I think I would like to join the military. And Emil's like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of scary when you see the sea of all these people who've passed away. And I and I had to stop and remind them that not all of them died in action, but they 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 were just like, you know, it's such a dangerous thing. But it's it, and I and it was just it really moved me to see these guys finally get it. I mean, they had been doing South Florida National Cemetery, but it's different. Like when you see Arlington, it's just completely different. And I appreciate the fact that Mike, you know, let me go and represent. I also, the second that I saw those Jet Fresh rower boxes <laughs> couldn't contain the pride of what you donated because there's a lot of other people who didn't donate. <laughs> and I saw those boxes and how many boxes you sent. And it was just like, I mean, Ramiro. Uh, pass her. There she goes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She needs a <laughs> tissue in a basket. It's so amazing. A tissue in the basket. No. Mimi is amazing. Do you notice how many so lives amazing. Mimi touches? She's so passionate. Everybody mm -hmm. that meets her loves her. And I mean, and it is a big part of that is yeah. the passion she has just for life and everything she does. And, you know, Thanks, to Jen. me, to me, it'd be honorable if if my son no, for or sure. daughter Logan has chose to, do it. To, to go to the military. But... They will go to Arlington with me. No, no, they they're going to have to. I, mean, I really do think that it's something that you have to experience. It doesn't matter what political party you're in. It doesn't no, matter what all. what you believe. It's 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 just to 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 take that history in and and to um, Tracy sent us a video uh, explaining about the tomb of the unknown soldier because you know you're there and you can research as much as you want, but um, once you start listening to the stories, it's it's completely different. I used to go and film it, mm -hmm. and every year I was up there filming it and. Like I'd, I'm, I'm not a photographer where I'm like like to be in people's faces. So I'd found the I got a big zoom lens and I was like hiding in the trees, just like filming off to the side. <laughs> Stuck. But you just see their reactions. You see people's it's faces. Wild. You see their private moments that they're having with the tombstones one on one and stuff like that. It's yeah, it's intense. It's it's a it moment. really is. And some of those photographers are a little all in everybody's face. No, nah, there's certain people that are that are definitely like going to get the attention like, yeah they're it's kind of like kind of i didn't like it i didn't like how they were for like, profit they're there for profit there's like there's Some always people. i don't know if he was there yeah. i haven't been there the last two years but was there's a little kid that was in the marines outfit was he yeah there? so it was a little different this year and so from what the years passed and i tried to to explain to tracy too because we were really really the, our main work was done on saturday I mean, we processed everything. We got there in the morning. We processed. Tracy was checking in all the volunteers, giving them the sections. Um, um, and then. So everything, I'm sorry to interrupt, but everything didn't come already like in wet pack boxes because no. that's how it used no. to be. No. No. 
In fact, this Queens used to webpack everything for everybody. Yeah, no. Or bouquet collection, rather. Would yeah, bouquet wet pack collection everything. would wet pack it all. No, no. So they're not doing that anymore. No. And well, honestly, so, we so had... So there's volunteers processing? We're, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's so the, a uh, the, there was Congrats. a big... That was a big part. So the processing also included That's removing, a big change. Mm -hmm. Removing anything that had dye. So we had to remove a lot of like foliage, a lot of the roses that were dyed because they can't be touching the tombs because they're like, you know, yeah, marble, white. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they're so... So there was that section, and there was people that were separating the bouquets, taking off all the sleeves. There can't be any plastic, no flower food, no rubber bands. Nothing can be on the floor. Um, Arlington is very strict. I think honestly, they 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 killed it with the the organization this year. Like it was like the second that we got there, everything was there was tables laid out certain areas. Everyone knew what to do, uh -huh. and you guided people to where they had to go. What was different this helps. year for me was that there was a big presence at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. So a lot of those flowers went straight there. And it was beautiful to see because on Sunday morning when we got there, there was a line, a huge line for people to go and place a flower on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. Um, and that was, that was really intense. But... Um, yeah. The ceremony there kills me. I mean, you, so, you can't help but cry there. So then Monday, yeah. that Monday they didn't end up giving out the flowers, but we were not there Monday. So that's why we didn't see like the the same person section you're talking about. Section like 60. That, yeah. We went to Section 60 on our own. But during that day on Memorial Day, there's a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. There's news cameras. That's, the most, that's, when the that's, that's the where the president recent. goes yeah. besides the tomb yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What stood out for me, one of the things that stood out the most was how many people from so many different countries and nationalities um, fought for the U.S. in various wars. And, and it's it's just it's beautiful. You know, um, you know, how many people from all over the world fought for our country? I was reading that uh, non-U.S. citizens were in the military. Yeah. Fighting yeah. For the well, we got home and we um, I made my kids watch Glory. <laughs> and they were like, wow, mom, thanks a lot. <laughs> what were your takeaways, Tracy? Oh, um, definitely. You know, when we were the first day on Saturday, um, Mimi um, was there helping me at the table, um, giving out the tokens. Every token meant one buck of flowers. And there were families coming in. Um, there was this one little girl, her name was Annie, she, Anna, she was so cute and she was with her dad and they were meeting like, did you say her name was people. Annie? No, <laughs> Anna. <laughs> I think she did say Annie uh, though first. <laughs> I know, right? That yeah. That would have been too good. <laughs> um, her name was Anna. She was probably four or five years She's old. She's Annie to somebody. Yeah, there you go. Um, and she, um, she was a little sad when she came in and, um, they were meeting people and I gave them their tokens. They wanted to go to 60 and then they were going to go to other graves. So um, once she saw the flowers, her eyes lit up and she was like, oh, flowers, you know, to see that experience from such a little soul like that, from being sad, from being there for whoever's grave that they were going to see and visit to the excitement of flowers was like, <laughs> um, and then when Jenna got there with Victoria, um, they had come back to the table after they had distributed their flowers and uh, Victoria and Anna totally took off and they were like besties. Um, there was a person that came in, uh, a gentleman, um, I'd say he was probably in his late thirties, maybe early forties. And he was a big guy. Um, he came in and took a bucket of flowers, went out, came back, picked up another bucket of flowers, went back out, came back, and another bucket of flowers. The guy, I think, came back like five times. Yeah. And it, you could just tell, like, he was a veteran. His people were out there. And he his mission was to cover as many graves as he possibly could. And that was just, like, it gave me chills. And, and, the, and the he was sweating. I'm like, dude, sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say, and the organization is very well known in D.C. Like, people come year after year to volunteer, which is beautiful. Yeah. How many Boy Scouts this year? Ooh, we had a big group. We had two groups of Boy Scouts this they're, year. They're the majority of the workload workforce normally. That's why yeah, I but I think that was because back in the day, and we met the parents of the of the boys who the the original Scouts who started with Ramiro. 
Was it Renato? Did they get a bad no, Renato. Renato, the Renato used to do um, his uh, his, trip his Jacksonville. That, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do they get a badge like for their Um there's definitely service. Um Yeah, you probably get something for yeah. that. You have to. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That's a lot of work to not get. Right, were you a boy scout? I was a cub scout for some point. Yeah. Cub scout. What's the difference? I don't cub remember. Cub scouts, you have to cross over to become a boy scout. So cub scouts I don't scouts remember camping. Elementary. I remember more like making soapbox okay, cars. Okay. So elementary. I think Mike Jr was a Mike was Jr a boy scout. was a boy scout. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Were you guys a Boy Scout I or, was, or I I was, a brownie? Uh, I was a brownie. Absolutely and not. I was, I was a, a brownie. troublemaker. <laughs> I was not allowed without adult supervision. Yeah, I yeah. think they put us in whatever extracurriculars we can do. Yeah. I was a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> I was playing soccer. I'd be the, the guy. The coach would be like, all right, take that guy out. And I, was I played a soccer guy. too. Yeah. Soccer, football. You do both. Everything. I, volleyball. Softball, baseball, we played them all. And Eden was really moved by the Boy Scouts because the Boy Scouts, you know, they're on, right. they're they're on from the very beginning. But more importantly, what's your best? What's your go-to Girl Scout cookie then? Mm, thin mints, all the way frozen. Thin mints, thin mints in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Thin mints in the freezer. Samoas. Samoas. Yep. Do you like do you like Ooh, Girl Scout cookies? You can't walk out of the supermarket without buying those cookies from those little <laughs> you girls. Say, you, you can never say it. no to those little girls. It's true. No. It's true. And then they got cookies. No. They're so Hello. cute. And they try so hard. They're hustling. They you know, they're are totally hustlers. hustling. Yeah. You you don't want mm -hmm. this one, but do you want that one? Are you sure? They, Does your they, wife want there's one? There's a I don't know the statistic. I can look it up, but there's a high amount of um entrepreneurs that started as Girl Scouts. Like it's it's really like it does teach them an amazing array of like you know, yeah. different things, but one of them for sure is leadership and business skills. <laughs> they come out knowing knowing the price. I was a of Boy them. Scout for a brief moment. What do you remember? I remember going to going camping in Bear Mountain, and my friend's dad was the leader of the Scouts. Was it troop? I guess. Yeah. Did you get in trouble? Trooper. Were you a troublemaker, I just, Mike? Did you know, oh, think of Canteen imagine. Boy? It's you a know, Canteen it's, Boy. So no, it's a pack when you're a Cub, Cub Scout, Scout, right? Yeah, it's a, Cubs the, yeah. Cub Scouts are elementary Scouts school. Are Once you pass middle school, you become a Boy Scout. You have to cross over from the yeah. pack to the troop. Hmm. So the, my friend's dad was the leader, and and we went going camping. There was, must have been like fifty kids, and uh, he go, he goes, Black, you're the quartermaster. Oh. And like, oh wow, I've got responsibility. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, in charge of something. This is a good thing. <laughs> I, I was very excited. I was very excited. And then he hands me like 50 pots and pans. And he says, You oh. need to carry this up the hill <laughs> to where we're staying. Oh, <laughs> and then you need to wash everything. And so I, the the quartermaster basically was the guy who took care of the pots and pans and washed the dishes after everybody cooked. Nice. So I didn't like that, that job. That wasn't yeah, that no. glorious. No. Not a great job. No. <laughs> no, but I do remember walking up the hill, humping those. He set you up. Pants, he set blank, you up with a good blank. title. He set you yeah. up so you were excited and then he handed you. Yeah, he got he got a really good yes. pots and pan patch, right? You got like the patch that had the pots and pans on it. I don't think I ever went back after that. I think that was the end. <laughs> that was the end. <laughs> I think that was the end of my Boy Scout career. A bastard Work smarter, not harder. The hill. Exactly. <laughs> is it still popular? Yes. Boy yeah, it's it's. Or is it's, it problematic? No. Right now, right now, it's going through a change because now there's girls inside the. They're in scouts. bankruptcy, I think. Right. Is this where you have to wear the hat and the polo in tucked in to the? It's the, definitely uh, not a cargo polo. Pant, yeah, cargo it's shorts. not a. It's it's yeah. not a polo, but yeah. It's a, it's a button down and the, the vest. Yeah, I yeah. was I was a troop. I was a uh, scout leader for three years. Um, Let me see the salute. No, I didn't. There was. Did a you salute. have a seat? You didn't have a salute. You have to have a salute. I I can show you guys pictures later. But Do the a bird thing call. was is that no. <laughs> thing at the Boy Scouts um, is different from the Girl Scouts because they're run. Basically, a lot of times it's aligned with religious organizations that have to lend you their church there's there's doesn't have as much support as the girl scouts so it's really up to the the leaders but they also had their really bad year like four years ago when they had to pay for all of the allegations and all the actual canteen boys yeah exactly so i got my kids out of it uh, the only good thing um th that thing the reason i want them to go back is because if you if you become an eagle scout you can automatically enter the military at a higher rank there's also there's so many 
um, benefits to. I think you get a lot of college scholarships offered exactly. for that. Exactly, Eagle too. Scouts, man, that's hard to get your Eagle Scout. Yeah. You have to like mm-hmm. have a service project uh, project that you're committed to for years. There are so many things that they learn that you know. I feel that this generation is losing how not to do certain like like they don't have those basic do skills. They still have Who do we like know that was an Eagle Scout? J R O T C in the school. Uh, um, Scott and Penny, know somebody. Scott and Penny's son from the Poker Flower Stand. Ah, that's right. He was yep. he was advanced level, and then he joined like the Air Force. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it does it does have a correlation there with um the Armed Forces. I wonder if he's cool. still in they the Air still Force. Still have that, Joel? Or is in the Marines? So I don't remember. Or probably. the Marines? Yeah, I wonder if he's still in the military. I bet you he is. Yeah, probably. What a good guy. The yes. ROTC um, it has to be a full public school, so the charter schools don't have it. Um, the private schools don't have it. That's the only thing. All right, let's um, let's turn. Let's, put me close. Yeah, let's change the channel. Let's change the channel. Tracy, a bit. We're very I'd like to the... talk about your flower shop. Your 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 dad and your family started like fifty years ago, right? So mm-hmm. your walk-in box must be like one of those old wooden walk-in boxes with the cork in the middle. Is that or is it, have you renovated? No, my dad renovated. Uh, he did have one of those. My grandfather had have. those. Yeah, my grandfather had yeah. one in his basement that was like, all it was filled with was gladiolas. Yeah, gladiolas oh, I know all about all the glads long. in the basement. I know all <laughs> yep. about those. <laughs> um, and, that makes uh, you strong. It sure does. My dad was saying, um, after he heard the last week's podcast or however long ago it was um, with the Armelinis, he was like, yep all those glad boxes he was like but we called them hampers we didn't call them boxes Mm -hmm. yeah and they had metal and they were like i mean i don't remember those wooden boxes i remember the the boxes coming in with like a piece of wood across it so that the flowers no they were in like these bushel boxes with the and one part of the bushel box was open so they could stand up but what the armelini said was right he says when you when you picked up a hamper of jip you're working when you picked up a hamper of glads, you're a man. Because let me tell you, that was right. And we didn't have plastic buckets either. I bet your dad or your, or your family, they, they had metal tin cans that they yeah, used. To, they were, yeah. Which I made everything even board. more heavy. Yep. They were made out of like galvanized metal. Yeah. Mike yeah. has traumatized uh, back labor because of all this. Which like, he vividly remembers. I believe it. Yeah. All these things. I believe it. Which I bet Mike, the whole industry does. Which, Mike, we yeah. have to let our people know that if you are still using those galvanized buckets, please use a plastic liner because the metal <laughs> will react with the flower food and it's harmful for your flowers. Mimi yeah. does <laughs> not play when it comes to care. No. Handling. But I think it's I too it. late. I think that they're, they're, they've already been galvanized. Yeah. No. Well, they. Yeah. You know. No, they're buying the, the cheap ones on Amazon. The metal the tin for the farmers market. Too. Look, people are still using them. They used to use. I still see. They them used at the to show. fill up. Uh, used to get them from the donut shop. They used to have the jelly in these big metal tins. They were like the same as a bu- flower bucket, like you have today, like a Home Depot bucket or something that size. But they were made out of tin. Okay. And. Uh, 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 they were thin, but we used to get those from the bakery. Smart. Because they used to have all the jelly and all that stuff in those things. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also used to jar up the flowers in those cans. They, they called them cans. And then suddenly there was plastic. The glory days. The huh? plastic. I bet you had all that stuff over there. You probably still have some of those metal cans laying around somewhere. <laughs> We probably do. I mean, I came across the Pearson box. So I was digging out something in the basement, and I came is across the Pearson box. Is it wooden? No, no. It's it's uh, that um, the wax boxes, those okay. old school wax boxes. I mean, your sled. I took a picture of it. I sent it to Celine, and um, I was, was like, send this to Mike. Maybe. A... <laughs> so Tara, Tara from Morningside Greenhouse, a couple years ago, was up in her dad's attic of their store cleaning up. And she found an old school wooden rose box. Wow. Like a coffin box. I said, oh, man, sell it to me. Let me have it. And she won't. I would love to make a piece of furniture with it, but she gonna she, have to, she wanted to keep it. We're going to have but, to challenge the pickers. There should be like a 28th uh, Street Museum. You guys should do like a. There is a guy doing that. Yeah. Is it Sahid? No, it's not Sahid. Sahid and, <laughs> no, it's not Sahid, yeah. But there is a guy doing that. That'd be He's cool. Got, that the like, guy that has the shop on the corner of like 28th and yep. 7th or 6th. Yep. Is it that guy? Mm-hmm. 
That'd be he cool. He found one of my dad's hats on eBay, this guy. I mean, that, okay, oh, yeah. Really? Now I remember. Oh, yeah. wow. And he wouldn't awesome. sell it to you, right? No. Yeah. Well, it's going to the museum. It's even better. He's got a museum, 20th Street Museum. Yeah. Did you guys see the cool. the on SAF on the forum on the Facebook page that they were sharing that old SAF light up? Oh, that's awesome. I would buy Holly, that. It, that Holly, thing is Holly, cool. Holly shared it and it's a thousand five hundred. She says, I can't afford it, sorry, and she let it go. But people are like, Oh, somebody's gonna somebody should be able to buy that thing because it was really beautiful. SAF needs to pony up, get that well, thing. At least let's make an offer. Who, who who's selling it? Well, let's um, offer him two fifty. See where it goes. <laughs> I'll start the negotiation. Mike. <laughs> start the bid at two fifty and see what happens. Yeah, but we're They'll gonna probably have to say start yes. the pickers on that. Mm-hmm. So, no, the, no, I would we buy need the it and I would give it to, to SAF get, to hang uh, up in their office because they box. should have it there. That's what we need. A wooden rose box. Tracy, I'm curious, when did mm-hmm. when did you start listening to the podcast? At which point? Uh it was last year. I um I was home after kidney surgery and um, I was like trying to figure out, I had six weeks off so because I was healing and I was trying to figure out if I wanted to stay in the industry or not. And, you know, take the time. Um, there were a lot of things that I needed to do for the shop, um, get a new website mm. and a uh, new credit card processing. And so I was like searching through podcasts and I found you guys. So this was like, my surgery was the Wednesday after Valentine's day. So somewhere between that and like the first of March, and I started listening to you guys and I just started laughing so much. The, the banter between all of you sounds like the banter between my father and all of our employees at the flower shop. And um, I was like, these guys are hilarious. And then the guests that you would have on, I'm like, I learned so much. And then when you were talking about next gen, I was like, what? And I'm like, that's cool. That'll like give me my answer, whether I'm going to stay in this or not, you know? And um Nicole Palazzo actually sent me an inbox message like out of the blue with the next gen thing. And it said one word come. And I was like, okay. And then you guys were like, bring it at home. And Mike was like, if you don't send your young people to next gen, you're stupid. And I was like, you know what? And I, I played it. I, I know I'm pretty sure that's verbatim words that you use. Um, and I, I played it for my dad and he was like, what? And I was like, no, listen, this is cool. And you guys had on, I can't remember who all you had on, but the Memorial Day flowers, like that was May. And that was the weekend of Memorial Day that you played it. And I was like, okay, it's too late for me this year, but freaking next year I'm going. And, you know, every Friday now I'm like, I look forward to this podcast so much. I went back when I was home after kidney surgery and listened to every episode mm-hmm. until. Oh, wow. And wow. Thank I, you. yeah, I love listening to you guys. No, seriously, I learn so much and Me the too. history of this industry yeah the the people in it the beautiful people in it and that it's you know to me then it was such a huge industry to and you guys have made it so much smaller for yeah. me understanding logistics understanding more so the wholesale end of things and why we can't get things at certain times of the year or why you don't want to get certain things sometimes of the year like you guys have just made me understand so much that my dad has always been trying to tell me that, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily listen to the people that are closest to you. So, you know, <laughs> I've learned <laughs> because I have open ears with you guys and you're funny <laughs> um, that, wow, it just but, brought everything in and, you know, it and then going to next gen and meeting Mimi <laughs> and all of you guys and yeah. Joelle um, was such a huge <laughs> Joelle <laughs> hiding over here. Yes, I met Joelle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, and then um and then meeting Emmy and being such a great oh supporter of Jet Fresh Growers. Thank you so much. Um, Tracy's Tracy's shop has been in the news twice during Mother's Day and for Valentine's, and she always has our hippie psychedelic out there. She's a big Speaking Rose fan. She loves the the fun. Absolutely. And I love that you guys it's have so fun, much fun with it. Yeah. We do. It's so much fun. And it, nobody else, you know, around me is doing it. They're starting to catch on. But it is so much fun. My customers love it. And then, you know, I inboxed um, Jet Fresh Growers because I feel like your people need to know how much of an impact they have on my customers and how much people love it. So I sent an inbox and I didn't know that it was Emmy that was, you know, handling the oh, um, Jet man. Fresh Growers 
um, messages. Mm -hmm. So when I met her at Next Gen in San Diego, I didn't know it was her. I just saw the Jet Fresh sweatshirt on. She got out of her car and I gave her a big hug. And I was like, ah, no way. <laughs> and then when Mimi told me later that she's the one that does the um, the Instagram, I was like, uh-uh. I'm like, so you're the person I've been talking to. Yes. Thank you so much. And she's like, I'm going to share this with um, with my crew back home. And I'm like, please do. They need to know like how much of a big deal this is to you know our shop. And it, it's so different and so much fun. Um, I love it. I love it. You guys are like the best in the business. You always bring the fun. You always bring the next big thing. Mike, you are like your eye on things is just amazing. When you say it's going to be the next big thing, it's the next big thing. Um, the, um, funky cool Medina roses. Those Mm. are so much fun. And then everything glitter, the, um, uh, you guys had a funny video with Celine Fern, Celine with, um, those new um, oh. orchids, orchids that are coming in. Orchids. Orchids. I got to get on that bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have to get on that bus for sure. How's the um, stems? Wasn't that a fun House video? Stems, yeah. Who knew Jimmy the Tulip was video. that good of an actor? Jimmy's a good Jimmy took it very <laughs> serious. You guys, both of them. Both of them. So he was Jimmy. practicing yeah. by himself in his room yeah. when we were... Uh, <laughs> Doing the birthday cake. <laughs> he was practicing right here. With her, with her gun at the I, ready. I knew Fern would be good. I didn't. I wasn't worried about Fern. But I, I was. we were debating who was going to be that person because we knew that person was the one who actually needed to like I think do most, some show reaction. I think most good salespeople are good actors. Right. Yeah, we can play I the think, part. I think but but if Jesse or Edwin would have done that, it would have been a, a completely different video. No, but you show guys don't box. understand. Show me the box. Show me the box. Show me the box. Celine was yeah. the star. So oh, yeah. You guys, yeah. yeah, but that was a lot of editing. Star. There was a lot of editing out of Celine's <laughs> well, scenes yeah. that she did amazingly well on. But if you watch that scene in real life, the real movie scene, and you watch that girl, and then you watch Celine, it's like, it's perfect. It's such a good side by side. Ryan did a great job with casting. Casting yes. was yeah. important. <laughs> Good job, Ryan. Casting makes the movie. Yeah. We have a little too much fun here. So, I'll tell you yeah, that. I don't know if this is a summer series, but uh, people were requesting more Friday features. Friday, uh, Friday movie features. Yeah. I love that. Um, the In the Garden with Celine is great. The um, Hey, Nat, what's that? That's I love your favorite. Those. Yeah. I love those. I like those. I love the last one where Pinky got was that a bear? in the back. What was chasing him? A bull. It was, a, mommy. It was a, a bull. It was a bull. A bull. So that's a trend that's oh, going we... on. But I, I had, we, Joelle and I were looking for like a good 20 minutes for one that was different and fun. And yeah. I found that one and I was like, oh my God, this has <laughs> to be it. Because we and, thought it was a bear. And if you look at the 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 same effect, the many puns that were used there, I go, they're utterly beautiful flowers. And Mike got the silk <laughs> by the horn, and I couldn't. I mean, it could have been like forty five <laughs> puns in one caption. <laughs> no, that was a really good job. Pinky really, uh, uh, really. Did we sell those hydrangeas? Yes. Did we sell out? Yes. Uh, yes, we sold yeah. them out. Petal took them off Saturday. Oh. <laughs> that, that kind of counts. That counts. Good job, guys. Good that job. Counts. <laughs> so, any any constructive feedback since it's since uh, as such a diehard fan listener, anything we could do differently? Um, I, a new segment you want to implement? Oh, geez, Louise. You know, you guys do such a great job. I love the banter. The banter between all of you, I think, is so great. It's so much fun. I agree. I think the banter yeah. is is definitely part the of the randomness. Charm. The randomness yeah. conversations, mm-hmm. the, the one food mm-hmm. discussion. Yeah. I think it's pretty honest too. That's what I love about it. <laughs> you, it's, you guys aren't putting anything on. It's you are who you are, and you know that's what it is. Like it's it's from the heart. It's not put on. Yes. It's not fake. Everything is real, and that, that's what I love most. What about that's questions? Like authenticity. What about questions? Are question? you fans of our questions? Ooh. Should we have new questions? We need more. Que- we need uh, more you know questions, what? I have to think fatties. About that. We need more questions. All right. well, I don't think you should change that. No, we're going to actually start. It's kind of like telling Johnny Carson not to have a monologue. No, not the questions. Make, not the questions. A... We're saying questions from the fans. Yeah, we want questions oh. from the fatties. Yeah, we're going to start the episode with a question from the fatty, and then we'll get, and then we'll do get into the guest, and then we'll end with the Ooh, questions like at the end, I think. That's cool. I'll have to think about a question. Because I always do have questions afterwards. I just have to... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tracy, what about a little bit of bad? Can't always be, uh, you know, ro- you can't have the rose without the thorn. 
So mm. there's gotta be. <sighs> that's a t-shirt. <laughs> yes, there's that is a t-shirt. Gotta that's be, a, that, there's gotta you know be what? some that's trouble sometime. Hat. It's a family the business. There's gotta be some trouble. Talk to us. Uh well, working with family is definitely difficult. Um, I feel like um, really quick, how many is it just are, you and your dad, or is there other family members? Uh, there's my mom. Okay. There's my mom. Growing up, it was my brother, my dad, my mom. And uh, yeah, it, it was the four of us. Um, my brother has gone into a different uh, place in the flower industry. He actually works for um, a grocery store chain and he's like their flower buyer guy. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. the bad, I think, you know, Fern, I'm jumping on that bandwagon with you is like reviews. Like sometimes, oh no, actually, Mike, that's you. Like the bad reviews, it's like, Oh. Don't worry. It's oh, all we all, we all it's hate all of us. Yeah, <sighs> we're you live and live and die by the we, Google review. Well, I was with poor Tracy. She was, you know, with me on Saturday, and she got a bad review, and my yep. heart broke for Tracy in that moment because what they wrote was unfair. Tracy wasn't there. It was a miscommunication, and I thought of you, Mike, because that I couldn't believe that 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 was going to affect her business because that's not it's it was so horrible to see somebody go through that yeah it was like a definite stab to the heart you know you put so much in you're there 10 hours a day and you know when you're not there you're thinking about your business and you're thinking about you know what's tomorrow going to be and you know making sure that you have all your ducks in a row and you know the the constant thought process of making sure that you're doing great and keep going keep going and then to have somebody cut you down that low is like, it, it definitely is a knife to the heart. And oh, yeah, that was rough. People so, use that shit as a secret weapon to make themselves feel better and to make your business suffer or, or, or maybe be passed by. So the ne- so they go to the next one. Like for me, I like I, I always say, I won't buy anything online if it isn't four point five stars or more. Yeah, I just won't buy it. I'm the same way. I won't buy. You're it. at least gonna look at. And, yeah, yeah, you're gonna look for the higher rated options for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, even then, even if it is above so, four point five, I read the reviews to see what people mm-hmm. are complaining but guys, about. You have to. Ninety nine percent of those people that are putting the energy to put those negative reviews can use that energy just to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Make a phone and call. Just, to, just, just you know, hey, man, I had a bad experience. Do you want to fix it? You know you're in and trouble. And then if Absolutely. they don't want to fix it, then, yeah, give me a bad review. I deserve it. The ones that but, piss me off are the ones that don't even, you know, don't even say anything right. and just yeah, leave right. a one-star one, review yeah. with no wording, right. no chance for us to fix it or do anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, that just that drives me literally insane. You know you're in trouble when you see the local reviewer under their name because that's all they do. They go that means they go on and they review all kinds of places all around the town. Yeah, yeah, like that's their job. One of them gave us a bad review and also gave Cold Stone Creamery a bad review. <laughs> what can a 16 year old kid at, Cro- at Cold Stone Creamery possibly do to make you give them a bad star review? How can you have that's a the bad people that just say yep. you're full of shit? How you has ice me- cream ever been a bad thing? How have you ever has anybody ever had bad ice cream? Right, and there's no adults working there either. So how do you have <laughs> a bad review for a 16 year old kid trying to make a few bucks to pay for gas money? I don't understand. And you know what, Mike? That was the situation. It was a 16 year old employee of ours that answered the phone, and yeah. I get shot down from like you know the person not understanding what the customer was wanting. You know, it's a kid. It's yeah. A kid. Maybe they refuse. Maybe they re- prefer that you have a call center in Sri Lanka. Or some other place <laughs> to answer, and 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 every other sentence is they apologize for your inconvenience. Mm. I try to turn on a Sirius XM uh, car onto my account yesterday. Uh oh! <laughs> Holy shit, man! If you ever had to do that, if you ever had to add a vehicle onto your Sirius XM plan. Or take one Get off. Get ready, folks. <laughs> because if there's anyone that deserves a one-star review, <laughs> it was those people. Your Let me tell you. I hate I was having about to... to call XM. That is the worst Listen, phone call you ever have I am so to make. zen here. Like, I don't get it. I don't get percolated here. I'm very zen here. And this lady 
<laughs> the first of all, the guy was like, he must have apologized for my inconvenience about 56 <laughs> times. That's all he can do. I apologize. And then he was telling it's all, me. It's all he's, a, it's all he's that qualified to do. We have, I have your little brother Connor's car. Somehow it's on my plan. I don't know how. He's 26 years old. Go, Connor. Go, Connor. Connor. Go, Connor. Connor, if you're Connor. Connor, if you're hey, listening, get the hell good. off my plan. Yeah. Get the hell off my plan. <laughs> okay. When's Connor coming? When's he coming to be part of the family biz? Next July. Month. Next month. Nice. Oh, July. Man. He's such a so, sweetheart. He's, well, he a need, he's a sweetheart, but he needs to get off my damn plan. Okay, <laughs> okay that's Connor. number one. Get off the insurance. And get then, off the, the and then they told me two vehicles are on two different plans, and I had to speak to three or four people. It took me almost three hours to resolve it. Was it resolved? Almost three hours. <laughs> and they're in another country, and they all have a different... If you call three times, you're going to get three answers with three stories for three different people. It is terrible. And it's all on a recorded on a recorded line for quality assurance, which is another joke. Yeah. <laughs> that's just Who so they listens can, to it? That's just so they can use it against you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if they're... Listen, if anyone deserves you a one-star You agreed to review, a lifetime plan. It's serious XM customer service. They suck. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it isn't some 16-year-old working at, 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 Cold Stone. At, at Tracy's Flower Shop that deserves anything no. like that. No. I don't know what she Thank did, you. but she did. How do you do that to just a kid working part-time trying to, you know, buy some gas money? Exactly. I don't, I don't, it's. She wanted a corsage for prom and uh, the young lady that answered the phone uh, thought it was for that weekend's prom, but it was for the next weekend's prom. So she misunderstood what she was saying, and and then yeah, bam, got a one star. Thanks. But what's yeah. the problem? I mean, uh, couldn't you just give him another croissant and another date? Because, because yeah, the, the, and they you know inconvenienced what? her. That's mm -hmm. right. No, and and that's the, the yeah, thing. Yeah, and I looked her up. How they were a week I early. I looked her up when I got back to the the shop on um, on Tuesday after Memorial Day. I looked her up in the computer to see if she had ordered with us before, and she'd never ordered with us before. Because so I was going to call her and she'd be like, "Hey, I'm really sorry for what happened." Um, let me make this right. And, you know, which prom is it for? Let's do this. And she wasn't in the system, so I couldn't get in touch with her. But I did, you know, apologize on the Google review. But she must she must have had a lot of other Google reviews negative for other people, right? I didn't That's, even bother looking. If you look, you'll probably see them because they're internet bullies. That's what they do. They don't get mm -hmm. their way. They just... That's how I know about the girl from Cold Stone Creamery because <laughs> we got a bad review from some guy. <laughs> And I looked at his other reviews and I was like, man, this guy gave a bad review to some kid in Cold Stone. That's just wrong. This, and then we got a bad review from this lady who came in like a million dollar car. How much is that car for? $450,000. $450,000. She's uh, coming to Jet Rose Fresh Rice Flowers, a, a, an importer, wholesale distributor. And somehow she got in. I don't even know how that happened. And she was not impressed with our service because we stopped to sing happy birthday for one of our employees. She didn't have no business being in our place in the first place. She belongs in a flower shop, not in flower distributor. So it I was guess Louis that's how Vuitton. she can afford that car because she does everything on the cheap. Let's, uh... Rude. Rude, rude, rude. <laughs> Let's try and keep Ryan's some of this still. Hey, at, at Ryan's well, trying to move on. I love it. Well, I mean, yeah, get up, get me off of this subject because I was very happy until we started talking. <laughs> well, okay, about I let's got. Talk about the yeah, see, no, okay, before, so before, that's the bad. That's the bad. Yeah, Do you guys so reviews to... suck. Yeah, you we know that, that. We know that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I forgot to bring this up on the podcast. I listened to Jerry Spring, uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, audio book, and he's got the book is basically like it's called uh, "Is This Anything." So he's like, just like random. It's not like a book. It's just it's like just random, random little thoughts. thoughts, essentially. It's like he turned his joke book into uh, an audio book. But he's got a segment on flowers. You guys want to hear it? Yes. 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 Probably the only thing that enables a man to keep a relationship going over a long period of time is the existence of flowers. A man alone cannot survive in a relationship. But a man with some flowers has a chance. If there were no flowers on earth, the world would be men and lesbians. That's it. <laughs> and that's why flower stores are not set up right for what men need. It should be you walk in, you tell them what you did wrong, they give you the flowers for that, and you just continue right out the back. The, all right, your brother's not an idiot bouquet. The, your career's important too, basket. <laughs> also, any man carrying a big bouquet of flowers is the king of that street. No other man with a woman wants to be seen anywhere near this guy. Or he gets, see, that's what I'm talking about. Because he's carrying flowers. 
He could have a severed head in the other hand. She doesn't notice that. <laughs> Why does he sound so robotic? <laughs> no, it's that's just, his. That's how he talks. He talks like that. That's the whole thing. That's how he's I so love impressionable. It. Flower power. And it's, it's all true. true. It's all it's true. totally true. When the guys come in and they're getting flowers, I'm like, they're Tracy, like, I need. Uh, yeah, Tracy, what's the craziest, craziest call that you ever got? Asking for flowers to fix a problem or something. Get to. Oh, get, yeah. There's one. The craziest uh, this, thing. All right. So it wasn't that crazy, but this guy, he was like totally on the, on the outs with his girl and he wanted something that was like amazing. So I was like, okay, let's do a hundred roses. So we did a hundred roses range in a vase and then he wanted balloons and the whole bit. And so we sent that out. It was stunning. So super cool. Um, and then he called the flower shop and he wanted his money refunded because she didn't take him back. And I was like, seriously, <laughs> no, it's been delivered. Worth a shot. You could, you know. Um, but I have had calls from like Katie Couric. She wanted something from one of our friends that lived in the town next to our, our shop. And then Oprah Winfrey called and she wanted like hydrangeas for um, one of the, one of her students that she sponsors uh, was graduating from um, high Doesn't school. Oprah have a place up there in Connecticut somewhere? Um, I know Martha cool. Stewart does. Oh, a lot of, a lot of the her. rich people a moved lot. out of New York and moved to uh, Connecticut. Tracy, don't get me yeah. started with Martha Stewart. Uh, Tracy, I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't what, what's your problem with Martha Stewart? <laughs> you know what really <laughs> grinds <laughs> his gears. I remember one time where I repacked all the mums and then she changed her mind and I had to put them all back. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what would you do if she called you right now and asked you for some mum plants? What would you do? I'd give her. Uh, no, just triple charge. Cousin Adam. Call oh, Cousin Adam. He's waiting for your call. There you go. You know Cousin Adam, right? You cousin Adam, cousin is a, Adam is a plant. He's a potted plant exporter in Ontario, Canada. Okay. Is he one of the guys that you go and visit? Yes. Canada. I'll be seeing him in July. We do the Ontario trip every July. Who's going with you this year? Casey. Casey. Nice. Casey you know flies up to Buffalo. I... And then I Any drive questions? over there, I pick him up, and then we cross the border. Yeah. All right, Tracy, before we get into our questions, if someone yeah. wants to reach out to you, they want to give you a hug, they want to help you with a bad review, oh. they want to beat yeah. up a person <laughs> that gave you a bad review, or they just want to talk about being uh, in business with the family, how can they get in touch with you? Um, I am on Instagram, House of Flora Flower Market, LLC. And houseofflora.com, H O U S E O F F L O R A dot com, Hartford, Connecticut. Boom, beautiful. All right, Ryan, rapid fire questions. Tracy, are okay. you ready? She should be, right? You, I'm ready. You probably, you probably had thought about your answers at least once, right? You know, every time, every week, I think. And I'm like, hmm. But they change. And then sometimes they the change. Yeah, so exactly. All right, they let's, do. Let's they do. do. So then, right off the bat, okay. what's the best sandwich? A Reuben. What is the scariest 100%. animal? 100%. A snake. What is the most overrated flower? A lily. What is the most underrated flower? Carnation. If you got one superpower, what would it be? To heal. To heal anything? Heal yourself. To heal. Um, there's so many people out there that, you know, struggle with things and to be able to help them and to be able to heal whatever it is, mm -hmm. that's what I would love. I'd like to help people with whatever it is, you know. If you can do that whatever. right now with your flowers. Yeah. Flowers help people. Yes, too. it's true. So you're but, helping people and you're already. Power and power. Power. and now, if you were added uh, singing into your deliveries, a Broadway <laughs> performance during the delivery, that's you know, I, that would blow me away if somebody sent me flowers, but the person started singing to a me. Singing? I just think not even just one person, like six people, like with a whole just popped out. You imagine first you think it's one, and then oh. like it's like a surprise performance. Look, we're giving you million dollar ideas that used here. To be, Tracy. That used to be a thing, guys. The singing, door, the singing delivery used oh, to be huge. What about just like a little yeah, those miniature curtain that you pull open and your flowers are there? Just like a small version of that. Pick a TV or movie character to have lunch with. This is my favorite. Ruthie from Ozark. Ooh, Ooh, that's yeah. a good, good one. one. She's awesome. So, she yeah. is so misunderstood. <laughs> and but she is a hustler and she will like she you know she's a good person. She just was brought up in, you know, shitty circumstances and um she tries her best and she, you know, she keeps getting screwed over, but 
in the end, like Ruthie, she stands on her two feet and she can swear. That's what I love about her too. (laughs) Like her mouth is like total potty mouth. Mine is too. I was gonna say, Um, I don't think you would, she doesn't, she doesn't seem like she curses. You, Tracy. Me? Yeah. Oh, (laughs) you know what? One of my friends. True um, follower people talk with their hands and curse a lot. Yes. Just saying. I curse a lot. It definitely like takes the stress down. Yeah. I, I swear a lot. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't think I've heard it. That's why I'm saying that. Mm, I have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ask Celine. Maybe. Ask Celine. Oh, I, yeah. I swear pretty much on the regular yeah. with Celine. You have to, I was going to give it up for Lent, with so with yeah. Celine. <laughs> oh, I, I, Good luck. I don't know. The, the two of us. I know. <laughs> Good luck. I feel, like, I feel like we need to send Tracy that clip of Celine. Tracy is, I sit next to Celine, so I know that Tracy is kind of Celine's therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, much you guys are you she, guys are great it's together. a completely different conversation when she's on the phone with you than when oh, I, no when my favorite is, is that she's on the phone with tracy but then she gets a call from richard and she's like okay i gotta go tracy and richard's calling me <laughs> we, I know, just, we, like, we just talked about it the movie waiting mm-hmm. the, the the waitress the angry one yes is celine like, celine for sure she can just turn <laughs> it off when she needs to get to work you know what like my father gets i think my father gets jealous you know it's almost like you know work wife celine you know mm-hmm. that you know that you can talk to whenever and um, and she'll listen to him, you know, which is so cute. Like after the Armelini episode, um, my dad called her and they were talking about whatever he needed to order. And then he was talking about the gladiola hampers. And it's yeah. just, it's so cute. It's so cute. And I'm just like, you guys are Miami, but it feels like you guys are next door. And, you know, oh, from I just listening that. to the podcast and getting to know you, I'm like from, you know, through the podcast, it's just like, you guys are on the same page. And I love that so much. Okay, we really need Fuck to yeah. we really need we to miss? know your your the new question, which is what's your go to drunk, drunk food? food? Two cheeseburger meal from McDonald's. Ooh, solid yes, choice. That's a good one. Yep, yep. With pickles or without? No pickles. Oh, with pickles. Oh, with pickles. Absolutely. No pickles. I love pickles. No I'm, the, pickles. I'm the only one. In my I house. had one. That's what I she had a said. cheeseburger from McDonald's on the drive up here. Is, wasn't it good? What Mike? state did you get it in? What state? <laughs> it tastes different depending it's on the probably state. Probably Pennsylvania. It does. Probably Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay. Well, we 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 stop at the Love's truck stops along the way mm-hmm. because they all have dog parks. Mm-hmm. Nice. So the coffee's decent. The bathroom's not bad. <laughs> and uh, they reviews. have the dog parks. So you should put out a truck every stop review. Three four hours, we stop at a Love's truck stop, and. uh Maybe like the barstool guy, but it's him at, at yeah. gas stations at and truck stops. Gas stations <laughs> yeah. talking about coffee. Well, no, we we have a system now. Like it, it's like it works. Like so, I we get to the gas <laughs> station, I pull up to the pump, we let the dogs out. Mom takes the dogs to the dog park while I have to. I throw the I, I throw the gas pump, the the gas. Uh, I, I get the gas going in the car. I run as fast again as fast as I can to pee because when you're over <laughs> at my age. That's a <laughs> necessary it for a thing. Few miles. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and I go in, I do my business, and then uh, I get the coffees, I get a couple snacks, a big bottle of water for the dogs, and then by the time I get back to the car, everything's ready to go, and we get back in, and we just go to the next one. So we're very efficient now. <laughs> Mike's got a system. We're very I efficient love it. now. Yeah, it, we have a system. <laughs> We're very we're very good at is it. Is there any stop? I, better I do than recommend Bucky's? the Love's truck stops for anybody who drives up and down. Uh because it's not really just for trucks. It's like how many Armelini trucks did you say you saw on the way up? Oh, we we saw a few. <laughs> we saw a few, but Stephen or whoever said it is right. He's mostly what you see is Amazon mm-hmm. and Prime trucking. Those That's guys ro- own the road. Amazon and Prime trucking is pretty much what you see. Mike, we is, saw one uh, bad truck accident, really is, bad. Is the loves better than a Bucky's? No, right? Bucky's is still no. is Bucky's top. It's of the a list. different animal. We definitely stop at the Bucky's in Daytona Beach <laughs> on the way. Uh, they have the world's cleanest bathrooms, the most spacious bathrooms. Each bathroom, it's not a stall; it's actually a closet, and you can close <laughs> the door behind you and have total <laughs> privacy. Each one has its own. Germex, which you know how I feel about Germex. Yeah. Each one has its own Germex, <laughs> and uh, it's clean. It's clean and spacious. I would say the coffee 
is okay, but it isn't great. It's okay. The sir, and, is, and they were very friendly in there. Welcome the Buckies, no matter mm-hmm. how many people are in there. Mm-hmm. And then when they have the brisket ready, they all yell, the brisket's ready, or something like that. Quite but Buckies is an experience. Yeah. Your, mom is uh, mom is given a time limit in Buckies. <laughs> otherwise, we'll be there for hours. I believe it. What kind of stuff do they sell, though? Oh, like, everything. What kind of everything. Stuff do they sell? It, imagine a Cracker Barrel mixed with a gas station, mixed with like a Disney World mixed with like a Kmart yeah. you don't you don't even know what yeah. to find in there it's like everything. there's every flavor of soda I, if, every flavor of every candy you could imagine of fudge oh yeah I'd get lost there but, too but they have every kind of beef jerky the nuts the nuts yeah oh yeah it, you it like the nuts on, huh? Huh? that's what I was like looking because I was going to tell Tracy <laughs> I'm going to send you some of those Bucky Nuts because they're ridiculous oh, Bucky Nuts <laughs> they're like these little they're like these little treats like, I don't know it's, yeah. it's addicting it's like uh... oh addicting huh <laughs> you're just you're just, just giving it. You're just giving it. They're, ammo they're here. going north. They're going up I ninety five. They're not just in okay. Texas yeah, anymore. They're moving. They're, going, they're moving now. They're there's going to be more and more of them. Yeah. I think they're going to take over, eventually. Yeah. Tracy, if you could suggest a future guest to be on the podcast, who would you suggest? So I have two. Is that okay? Yes. Of course. All right. So the nicest girl ever. Um, and I don't think she's been on this. Jackie Levine from Central Square oh, Forest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's a good one. She in Boston. Yeah, she is in Boston. Yeah. She's she awesome. is so smart. She, I love this girl. She, like, she is the kind of person that I don't think would ever, like, step on an ant. You know, <laughs> she is the nicest girl. And it's just so beautifully graceful with the way that she speaks. And I love her. I love her. Yeah. And she's always willing to help people. Um, I would love to hear her talk because she's just so intelligent. Um, and then the other, my dad. There you go. Richard. My dad. I would, I would love to hear Mike and my dad go back and forth. We'll just know, let the them two sit with the mics. Uh, we'll yeah, leave for lunch and we'll come back and they'll be, they'll be still going. Pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, much pretty what's much. gonna happen. We we'll definitely won't get no words in on that one. No, I like though. I like <laughs> when we go backwards and we get the older generation. Yeah, because I like the to hear those of that. history. Yeah, I do enjoy it. And the oh, nice man. part about that too, Jackie's dad. Um, you know, Jackie, I think, is a fourth generation florist as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, her dad. You know, I think that would be cool. I think it'd be really cool. I met them at uh, at the next gen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or Jackie, SAF or them. something. And they're they're very, they seem to be very yeah. close. Jackie's very marketing driven. Her and her dad smart. seem to be very close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is great. awesome. She's, we'll have to get. Make yeah, that she's happen. such a sweet girl. Okay, I'm sorry, Tracy. I'm sending you the, the Bucky you Nuggets. They're not nuts. They're called the Nuggets. <laughs> the Bucky Nuggets. Uh, nuggets? Okay. I'll send okay. you some. Now they're called Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? There was one thing I found out that I totally had to tell you. I'm sorry. I know we're out of time. But the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, um, my boyfriend told me that the Sentinels that are part of this, they are never allowed to swear in public and they can never drink ever, like in their entire life. Once you sign up to be a Sentinel, you can never drink. I'm like, Whoa. don't what? they like live underneath it or something? Yes, yes, they live. We there's got... like a, the catacombs. Why would you sign up for that? There's but, like a uh, barracks wait, down there. I mean, like uh, Tracy and I, Tracy dedication. and I got so scared because they yell, they yell like when people are talking, and there was a group of like, um, Irish. It was we never even determined the school that was there. But those, they were Irish. The kids were Irish. so loud, and they got up and he, they just they did a quick pivot and were like, "You are in a sacred grounds." You are not allowed to speak. You just respect the silence. And we, like, Tracy and I literally were like, yep. sorry. Yeah, I was like, mm, respect Those are like the, the guys that guard the queen in England. Yes. They, they, they well, the changing they of the around, guards, no. uh, they, changed the, they changed there. It's 21 steps. Tracy gave my kids the whole rundown, the history of it. It was amazing. And yeah, it's super interesting. It's so cool. Because a 21 gun salute is the most honored thing that you can do for someone. And it started, I think, in England, like 1400s, 1500s. I did research on this. But my boyfriend told me while we were there that it's 21 steps, that they take 21 steps. And it looks like when they're moving, like they're floating. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Like it's so beautifully choreographed. And so they do 21 steps out after they do the changing of the guard. And then they face east for 21 seconds. And then they turn and they go back another 21 steps to where they came from. And then, you know, just repeat the process. But it's always 21 and 
I counted and yep, it was 21. Mm-hmm. It was very cool. Like the amount Imagine. of respect. It was, totally <laughs> it was only 20. I know, right? <laughs> you messed up. No, <laughs> I wouldn't speak. <laughs> no. Those uh, swords that they have out in front, bayonets, the bayonets that they have at the end of those rifles. I was like, those are cool. be scared of that. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, thank you guys for, um, you know, doing that uh, podcast last year where I learned about it because I'd never heard about Memorial Day flowers until then either. So being able to be a part of that was like huge to be able to go to Arlington, um, meet, meet me there, you know, I meet up with you there and your family and then, you know, spend the day and then spend the next day doing something rather than just going to a parade and watching people be, being able to, you know, go out there, go out to the cemetery, go out to the graves and place a flower. And, you know, Mimi said, um, when you go out, speak the soldier's name out loud and their rank. And, you know, then you say, thank you for your service. And I was like, that's huge. I would have just gone out and just laid a flower down and, you know, looked at their grave marker, but um, she's like, no, you have to say their name out loud. And I was yeah, like, we, that is really cool. And not only that, so, Tracy, you were amazing because Tracy, Tracy has that gift of, of comfort. And there was so many flowers that we, there was so many families that we saw on, on our way to go distribute some stuff and on our way to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers. And we had extra, she carried this poor bucket all day long because we gave out a whole bucket of flowers just to <laughs> random like families that were giving out stuff. But um yeah it, it was an honor it was an honor to be with you i hope we do it next year and um and I, I i appreciate i appreciate you i've always appreciated your friendship but i appreciate you on a different level because what you your passion for your industry and it's just something thank you yeah thank you thank you same <laughs> well thank Back you action, thank friend. you for answering the call tracy we appreciate uh yeah. that you went out there and you wrapped the fatty nation we're calling the rest yes. of you fatties out there next year you i will pick you up i will up pick you tracy. up on my way down <laughs> tracy's I will pick coming you up. for you guys people in new jersey maryland virginia i know some of you i'm not going to say your names right now but i know you're <laughs> out there I know you're so i will pick you up and we will go and we'll have an amazing time yeah. you can if you can make it through mother's day and valentine's day you can make it through um memorial day flowers it's yeah. it's awesome. the same heart and soul that you put in and you're just you're making people's day better it's awesome agreed thank you tracy thank you thank you mimi for you may as well uh you may as well give a contact for memorial day flowers as well in case somebody wants to reach out to them yes you can find them um mm-hmm. and actually they're M- memorial day M-E-M flowers day, mem day flowers on mm-hmm. instagram social yes. media and memorial day flowers.org do Check it, it out, go yo. all right i'm joining the cool kids anything we missed tracy anything you wanted to touch on no, I think I got it all. Thank you so much. I love you guys so much. <laughs> love you too, right Tracy. Right back at you. All right, you ready? You ready? All right. And this- thanks for Jenna for popping in here. Yes. <laughs> yes, this guy, Jenna. Bro. This guy's killing me. Thank you, Jenna. Anything else, anybody? We're ready? This has been another amazing episode of Two Fat Guys Talking Flowers, where we're always going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly about flowers. I'm Fern here with Joelle, Ryan, Mimi, Cabin, Mike, Tracy, Park. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jenna had to go. We wish uh, we congratulate her. She's, I hope she's kicking butt out there, wishing her good luck. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.